Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is From Rights, R I T E S, to Rights. R-I-G-H-T-S Beloved family, our text says, Great sorrow awaits you, scribes, religious scholars, and Pharisees. Such frauds and pretenders. You do all you can to keep people from experiencing the reality of kingdom heaven. Not only do you refuse to enter in, you also forbid anyone else from entering in. Great sorrow awaits you, religious scholars, you scribes and Pharisees, such frauds and pretenders. For you will travel over land and sea to find one disciple, only to make him twice the child of hell as yourselves. For you teach that there's nothing binding when you swear by God's temple. But if you swear by the gold of the temple, you are bound by your oath. You are deceived and blind. Which is greater, the gold or the temple that makes the gold sacred? And whoever swears by heaven, swears by the throne of God and by God who sits upon it. Matthew 23, 13-22, The Passion As I was studying for this sliced seed message today, Holy Spirit led me to this translation in The Passion, where King Jesus is just going off on the religious leaders, scribes, Pharisees, and legalists. He had enough. I thought it wise to explain these two groups of people that opposed the king and his kingdom. Although some scribes were Pharisees, scribes had knowledge of the law and could draft legal documents like contracts for marriage, divorce, loans, inheritance, mortgages, sale of land, and related agreements. Every village in biblical times had at least one, and they would be considered lawyers today. Pharisees, though, were members of a party that believed in the resurrection and in following legal traditions that were ascribed not to the Bible, but to the traditions of the fathers. In other words, rights and regulation and traditions of men. Like the scribes, they were also well-known legal experts. Hence, the partial overlap of membership of the two groups. Most Pharisees were small landowners and traders, not practicing the profession of the scribes. So these were the people who were experts in the law, including religious law, rites, and rituals. Remember when King Jesus' disciples were hungry and they were eating grains? They were walking through the grain fields and his disciples were hungry. But the Pharisees saw it when they picked the grains and said, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. But he said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry? He and those who were with him? How he entered the house of God and ate the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priest? Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath, the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Yet I say to you that in this place, there is one greater than the temple. But if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even over the Sabbath. Matthew 12, 1 to 8. But right after that, King Jesus said this, as he went into the synagogue, the Jewish temple, he saw a man with a withered hand on that same Sabbath day. And those same set of legalistic religious folk asked Jesus, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Which man among you, when seeing his sheep falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not help him? How much more valuable is a man than a sheep? 
Oh, yes, we know he is the good shepherd. Then he said to the man, stretch out your hand, and his hand was healed. Then the Pharisees went and plotted on how they might destroy or kill him. Let me make it plain for you. The religious Pharisees premeditated murdering Jesus. Okay, let me not overlook the role of the lawyers and the scribes because they hated him too. We see in Mark 2, 6, King Jesus was in Capernaum teaching in a house and friends of a paralytic man brought him to Jesus, but they couldn't get close. So they lowered him down through an opening in the roof. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Oh, King Jesus can read your mind. He said to them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven you. Or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately he rose, took up his bed, and went out of the presence of them, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, We've never seen anything like this. Mark 2, 5-12 what a great lesson for us today, fam. Now you can see that Jesus is taking away the power and authority of the Pharisees, the scribes, the legalists, and the lawyers. He says, you revere the temple, but I am greater than the temple. He says, you revere the Sabbath, but the Son of Man is greater than the Sabbath. And then King Jesus says to them, if you honor the Father, then you should honor the Son. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. For the Father and the Son are one. John 10, 30. Those were fighting words for the scribes and Pharisees. And they plotted to kill Jesus, but were afraid of the people. So what did they do? They appealed to Caesar and the Roman Empire to crucify Jesus because he claimed to be king of the Jews, a territory or colony that belonged to Caesar and Rome. The Roman governor Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea? Jesus asked. Or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Says Pilate. Your own people and chief priests have handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. John 18, 33 to 37. But when Pilate said, I find no fault in this man deserving of death because he really didn't believe that Jesus was a king, the Jewish leader said, you are no friend of Caesar. And they demanded that King Jesus be crucified in spite of Pilate offering them Barabbas, a known insurrectionist who wreaked havoc on the Jews. So the Pharisees, the scribes, and the Roman Empire was against King Jesus because he was the son of man who was born king. Our seed today is from rights, R-I-T-E-S, to rights, R-I-G-H-T-S. I read the other day, in a Newsweek article about a heartbroken Catholic priest resigning after 20 years because according to the Catholic Church, all the baptisms for the past 20 years that he did were deemed invalid. Listen to the reason. He was saying the wrong words at baptism. Instead of saying, 
I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, he was saying, we baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now they are letting everyone know that were baptized over the past 20 years, that they can return to have their baptisms corrected. In my opinion, he should say we, because he included the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Family, King Jesus is calling us out of our rights, R-I-T-E-S, of religion, into the rights, R-I-G-H-T-S, as children of the Most High God and King. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind to go from religious membership or rights to kingdom citizenship and rights. Much love.